day, everyone. Thanks for joining the MIPI Alliance webinar, the new frontier of MIPI CSI2 camera and imaging applications. Today's webinar is presented by Haran Tanikas, excuse me, Tanikasalam from Intel. Haran is also the chair of the MIPI Alliance camera working group. So before we start the session, a few things I wanted to mention. All of the telephone lines are currently muted. They have been muted upon entry. This session will be recorded. We will make it available on the MIPI Alliance website in the Knowledge Library, and that will be available by the end of the day today. The session will run for approximately 60 minutes. We'll take about 40, 45 minutes for the presentation and then open up for a Q&A session. And for the Q&A session, you can raise your hand in the chat window. You could type a question in the chat window, and there's also a Q&A dialog box to type your questions. Once I see your hand raised, I can unmute your line if you wish to verbally raise a question. Otherwise, please type your question into the chat window. So let's start the session, and I'd like to now introduce Peter Luskin, Managing Director of the MIPI Alliance, he'll provide a brief introduction. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Derbler, and welcome, everybody. Um, just want to give a few slides as an introduction to Heron's presentation and give uh, the, the large majority of the time to Heron to provide the, the content uh, for today's webinar. Um, just a little bit of background. I, I think most of you are here probably are aware of MIPI Alliance, but one of the real uh, foundational specs that MIPI Alliance was formed uh, around was to standardize camera and display interfaces. And this was back in 2003. You could see the image of the phone. Uh, I, I still see some of these phones out in the market today. Um, but really, MIPI's uh, initial uh, standardization efforts were, were really focused on uh, specifying and standardizing the camera uh, sensor interface uh, between the camera and the application processor. Um, and and the, the, again, this was 15, 16 years ago uh, with the foray of, of cameras and in, in mobile phones. If you go to the next slide. Just want to give a little bit of background with regard to the MIPI Alliance ecosystem because it's wide and, and varied. Um, as are the specifications and, and uh, applications that we support. Uh, if it, originally, when, when MIPI was formed, uh, the founders and, and the initial members were really the application processor developers, uh, the mobile device OEMs, and the semiconductor companies. And as MIPI Alliance uh, developed specifications, the specifications were implemented in the marketplace, uh, people realized that uh, you know, they were implemented widely. Other parts of the ecosystem started to join and support uh, MIPI Alliance specifications. Those include test equipment companies, test labs, software providers, uh, varied consumer electronics companies, IP and VIP providers, which are uh, important to the organization, as well as today, we have a number of automotive OEMs and, and tier one suppliers. Uh, we're obviously a global organization in 27 countries, and at the end of the year, we had 339 members. We continue to be uh, both surprised and uh, and energized by the fact that you know various uh, companies, even companies that you wouldn't expect joining MIPI Alliance, um, are joining to pick up the specifications, that implement them, adopt them in their uh, products and applications. If you go to the next slide. So MIPI specifications, and first and foremost, MIPI is a, is a mobile specification organization. We don't profess to be anything else. Uh, we took a very focused strategy of delivering specifications for the mobile ecosystem. Uh, and we figured that uh, if we did and develop the specifications in the right way, low power, low EMI, high bandwidth, that those specifications could be adopted in, in, in other applications and areas. And as the mobile uh, industry evolves, so has MIPI and its specifications and the requirements that go into that. Um, on the left side, you see the mobile system diagram. This is really representative of the disparate 
um, specifications that we support within MIPI Alliance, about 14 different working groups working in parallel, total of uh, 48 specifications across the Alliance. Um, and in different industry segments, uh, automotive, IoT, medical, uh, aviation, uh, and consumer electronics devices. And I think one of the, the foundations that uh, when MIPI started was the fact that um, mobile specifications were uh, royalty free uh, if adopted or implemented in the mobile terminal as defined in, in the membership agreement. And um, this, I think, really, um, you know, is a, is a linchpin of the success of MIPI Alliance that, you know, implementation in mobile was royalty free. Implementation outside of mobile was on reasonable non-discriminatory terms, on RAN terms. Um, recently, that last year, early last year, we updated our IP policy to really bring it current and to bring it in alignment with the way the specifications were being adopted uh, within the mobile industry and, and more widely. And so we have a, a fully um, royalty-free IPR policy. Uh, this includes, you know, implementation in mobile and outside of mobile. And, and in, I'll turn this over now to Haran, and he'll talk about the, the varied uh, applications and, and use cases uh, and drivers for the evolution of the, the camera interface. So I thank you for joining today. Um, I'll be here for the question and answer as well, but let me hand it over now to Haran to take you through the rest of the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to um, uh, welcome to um, uh, with MIPI uh, Imaging Conduit Solutions and how we are advancing uh, the, the various uh, uh, conduit solutions for various product platforms. Uh, we are going to start off with um, uh, with a big why. Um, so so we are in the business of um, making life better, enriching our lives by understanding the world around us. And this is something we've been, we've been working at you know, since the dawn of time. And the pathway we have often taken is, is through knowledge acquisition. Um, based on uh, past experiences, past knowledges, we often utilize our mental constructs to, to generate um, various concepts uh, to, to explain um, the, the nature of things around us, um, and, and so far, it has, uh, it has worked relatively well, and it has taken us this far. Um, but that said, uh, in our generation, there are two um, key discoveries that we have, uh, that we have um, uh, recognized and certainly uh, elaborated quite a bit. And, and the first is, um, uh, ultimately, uh, uh, the, the conceptualized ideas are, are quite often a, a very narrow um, slice uh, of the of the actual phenomenon, and and this is this is done in such a way mainly due to the fact that we as individuals and also as collectors are are limited to to our mental constructs, and and it is through the mental constructs we are able to um, uh, essentially um, understand the nature of things around us. Um, and, and this also has some, some very interesting dysfunctions as well, um, that, that number of uh, uh, neurophysicists and certainly psychiatrists uh, working with the AR, VR communities have, uh, have, have percolated. Um, and, and also for the first time in the, in the recorded history, uh, we have stumbled upon um, an intelligence um, that, is, that is superior to that of ours. And, and we have um, quite conveniently labeled this as artificial intelligence or, or machine intelligence. Um, and, and so this sets forward uh, a very interesting uh, shift uh, into, into the fourth wave of, of technological advancements and innovations that most of our companies are presently uh, participating in. Uh, and that's labeled on the left here as, as uh, AI and, and AI uh, vision. Uh, now, when it comes to AI and vision, uh, it, it is fair to say that we are already more or less in a symbiotic relationship with the machines, you know, be it be the mobile phone that we carry around or 
the, the iconic uh, uh, devices that are in our living rooms uh, that are continuously monitoring uh, for, for big little movements. Uh, and, and certainly, future is deeper uh, interactions with the machines. And, and this sort of brings us to uh, 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 essentially a crossroad. Um, there, there are two pathways uh, of, of reducing uh, the deeper interaction with the machines, uh, which, which is intrinsically coupled with the human device friction. And the first is um, uh, making us become more like the machines. Uh, and, and, uh, and the second is, is making the machines uh, become more like us. Uh, and it is fair to say that, that there, are, there are a couple of companies uh, that are uh, startup companies that have come out of stealth mode, which is very much indeed pursuing uh, the first pathway, uh, quite literally drilling holes in the back of uh, individual sets and deploying nodes to monitor neurons as well as um, generate uh, biochemical electrical discharges to, to, mimic, um, uh, uh, to mimic objects in the visual cortex. Uh, the second uh, is, is what um, the MIPI uh, member companies within Camera Work Group are very much um, uh, pursuing and, and very much uh, dedicated to rapidly advancing the solution phase, and that is, to, that is to making machines become more aware of the surroundings uh, but equally important, uh, and this is a theme that, that hopefully will, will come through in today's presentation, is to establish a, a deeper connection uh, with, with us, with the, with the end users. So if we, if we look at it from this perspective, um, the, the holy grail of, of minimizing device human friction can, can very well be reflected upon our, our own individual life experiences and our lives. Um, ultimately, um, the, one, of the, one of the things that we quite often value are, are meaningful, um, meaningful connections we, we have with, 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 um, with others. And, and a great part of what enables and facilitates a sense of trust, a sense of connection, uh, has, has a, lot, a lot to do with visual cues. And so on the left, uh, we have a, um, uh, an example of concentric circles in which um, uh, what, what number, of, um, number of companies are currently developing inferencing algorithms using image sensor solutions towards, and that is to detect basic human emotions. Um, and, and, uh, and the inner circle has um, a superset of, of what, those, what those emotions could be. And on the right side, we have various different ways of um, uh, machines that humans are able to express themselves. And, and these two wheels essentially form the blueprint for alleviating the, the various different friction points that we as a species um, are, are having with the machines and certainly will continue to have with the deeper interactions with the machines going forward. So from the camera work group perspective, this is the problem. This is the big problem that we are currently tackling, which is um, how, do we, how do we develop the building blocks? How do we develop the infrastructure at, a, at scale and not just limited to mobile product platforms, but certainly going beyond mobile product platforms, and not just limited to capturing visible spectrum uh, historically mapped to cameras, but supporting a much broader array of image sensors to essentially bless the machines with the, um, with the, with the, with the gift of sight. Um, and then using sight, the machines will then be able to um, uh, through deep learning and, and massive iterative um, uh, uh, inferencing and data analysis, we'll be able to perform near real-time perception and decision making. Now, if we take a look at even even some of the emerging trends, um, and this is this is from say Q4 Q4 of 2019, uh, during November December last year. Some of the interesting trends that we that we observe are, if you look in the retail space, um, we already have AI that is deployed to continuously monitor for contextual awareness, whether through audio, uh, telephone conferences, 
Um, and and what is what is lacking here is is making um, the the the, um, the humanistic connections. So at the at the 2019 Salesforce Greenforce uh, event, uh, one of the examples that was uh, that 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 very much resonates with with number with the member companies is that today, if you have uh, let's say State Farm as a as an insurance company. And, and the representative is speaking to somebody on the other line uh, who, has a, who has a water damage, um, then, then the AI is already able to monitor the voice conversations and, and bring up the right policies and the latest updates to help provide uh, uh, the, the most accurate information to the customer. However, the wish list coming from the number of institutions um, it, it, is, that, is that today we have that, that lack of uh, connection um, uh, um, with, with um, customers who may be calling in from remote sites. So one pathway could very well be uh, um, deploying uh, avatars, uh, which, which basically removes the apprehension most people have with a, uh, with a sense of privacy. Uh, so it's not your your um, it's not like the webcam application where your actual face and and whatever the background is is going to be transmitted, but rather um, the the various face gestures are then transcribed into a custom avatar, and the avatar will essentially be um, conveying your facial expressions while the communication is happening in real time. And the market research is, uh, is very much showing that, that just by having this avatar during this communication, uh, uh, it, it, it just dramatically improves the level of uh, connection, um, both on a one-to-one -one basis, but certainly in, in collaborative settings as well. And so some of the features we will talk about very, uh, very shortly are, are very much geared towards providing the most optimal end-to-end imaging conduit solutions for, for such applications um, that, that, that certainly uh, been addressed uh, 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 in, in the latter part of 2019. Computational imaging, emotional cognition uh, is very much going to be uh, the next wave of, uh, uh, of, of solution phase uh, that, that is needed on broad range of product platforms, whether it be in-cabin uh, driver monitoring uh, or, or, moni or, or surveillance applications uh, within our house and outside our houses, but also in, in public places like schools and, uh, and, and sports stadiums. Um, pathway to full autonomy, particularly in drones and, and automotives, uh, certainly requires imaging solutions beyond uh, the, the visible spectrum. And that is something the, the MIFI camera work group is very much aware of. And, and we are certainly um, consciously supporting image sensors like radar, sonar, lidars, and also um, some of the upcoming passive radiation sensors uh, is something we are looking into. And then the last component is uh, uh, thanks to some of the changes that are in flux um, with, with regards to state regulations and policies, um, it appears there is now a line of sight to, to deploying near military grade sensors, image sensors, uh, particularly on um, autonomous platforms, uh, which, which, is, which will uh, uh, dramatically improve um, some, of the, some of the awareness, surrounding awareness capabilities, even in, um, even in, um, in dark, um, uh, dark uh, low light situations. Uh, and to achieve this, um, we, we got to have uh, authentication, obfuscation, um, key signing provision. It is also something that, that the camera work group is working, uh, working on developing in time for product intercepts. As, as Peter mentioned, uh, MIPI has been evolving for over a decade and a half, and then certainly CSI uh, development has, has, has indeed started with developing the most pristine photography and video streaming solutions on mobile product platforms. And this is very much a, a success story. A broad range of mobile phones today are indeed using the WIPI CSI2 imaging conduit solutions over DeepEyes and, and CFIs. 
Um, if, it, if you are migrating from uh, from the mobile product platform, what, what the Lindsay Camera Workgroup has done is we, we leveraged all of the tribal knowledge from image sensor companies and application platform companies uh, along with test equipment makers and IP providers, and we migrated the tribal knowledge to uh, to facilitating imaging solutions and, uh, and applications on beyond mobile product platforms, um, and, and also supporting sensors uh, beyond just camera sensors. The phase three uh, gets into, uh, goes into um, facilitating the building blocks and infrastructures required for uh, deep awareness, deep learning, um, using various um, inferencing, uh, inferencing algorithms, and providing the right infrastructure, the right capabilities and, and features to, to help facilitate um, awareness on, on a broad range of platforms. And the fourth phase um, is, 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 you know, once we have all the features and capabilities, it really comes down to how do we go about scaling this globally, um, not just on individual products, uh, closed systems, but, but essentially scale them into, into open systems, into, into clouds, into municipalities, hospitals, and schools. Um, so this is this is kind of the high level trajectory of how we how we are evolving um, the MIFI CSI2 uh, imaging conduit solutions. On the upper left hand side, it, it this is sort of the blueprint of the methodology Camera Work Group has been following for the last uh, six seven years, and that is on the on the left side we have. Um, we have incredibly um, uh, brilliant domain experts who are, who are often able to forecast how the ingredients in themselves are evolving, whether it be the photon collectors and image sensors uh, or various different um, uh, inferencing algorithms and, and how, for instance, you know, we used to have about 20 different uh, face recognition algorithms about five years ago, and today we have about maybe, maybe about seven or eight uh, inferencing algorithms. And perhaps you know, five, 10 years down the road, um, we may have an opportunity to talk about perhaps standardizing some of the basic building blocks of uh, inferencing algorithms as well. Uh, on the right side, we, we get to talk about the various applications, um, imaging applications that are mapped to not only mobile product platforms, but also uh, client content creation product platforms, a broad range of IoT, and then certainly autonomous platforms like, like automotive as well as drones. So there are two different architectures uh, for, for imaging from, from MIFI. Uh, on the left, we have uh, CSI2, uh, which, which is natively supporting uh, four different flavors of IOs. Uh, we have I3C, D5, C5, and A5, which we will get to talk about uh, quite shortly. Uh, and on the right, we have a, a, a very different architecture. It is, it is a CSI3 architecture. The key takeaway here is that uh, a CSI3 is, is not a next-gen solution. Uh, it is a different architecture. Uh, and CSI3 is, is, is not a superset nor backwards compatible with CSI2. And I think it's also fair to say that for the last, uh, uh, for the last four years or so, the MIPI member companies have very much been focusing on advancing CSI2 uh, and, and we continue to rapidly evolve the CSI2 architecture uh, to facilitate broad range of imaging applications. So let's talk about what's done, what's, what's available today, uh, particularly uh, encapsulated with the CSI2 version 3.0 that, that was recently released with the latest uh, C5D5 offerings along with I3C. Um, the first is power spectral density reduction, right? So, so if you talk about um, if you talk about image sensors today, um, particularly the image sensor modules coupled with D5 supporting periodic forward and clock, uh, the the emissions in the frequency domain can can quite often appear as the most aggressive uh, element on on system platforms. 
Um, and, and for CSI to over CFI, uh, if we if we have pixels that are um, that are repeating, that could also appear as frequency spikes. So a combination of scrambling uh, for 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 CSI to over CFI, and and um, and a combination of scrambling and, and spread spectrum plotting for CSI to over DFI uh, helps to dramatically improve. Uh, the the um, the effects of uh, repeated pixels along with periodic clock. Now for CSI to over 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 C5, uh, the, since the clocking data are are embedded, uh, spread spectrum clocking obviously is is not needed. Um, the next is uh, latency reduction transport efficiency. Uh, this has three incredibly um, important benefits. Um, uh, for for uh, system product deployment, uh, which we will talk about very shortly, uh, and then we have uh, USL unified serial link that that's uh, um, uh, that's going to dramatically reduce the number of wires that has been historically associated with a with a MIPI camera interface. Uh, SROI refers to smart region of interest, and and this for the first time enables for for system integrators and system architects to consider imaging solutions that are not necessarily a centralized architecture, but perhaps a hybrid architecture, or perhaps even consider edge processing uh, where uh, we have intelligence that can be deployed uh, into the sensor module in itself, uh, which, is, which is quite exciting. Um, DPCM RAW24, um, this is this is again this is where bring in um, incredibly brilliant imaging scientists and and we have uh, a curated bespoke compression solution here um, that is able to um, um, uh, essentially preserve edges um, and and um, and various um, uh, modular transfer function simulations along with low contrast medium contrast high contrast simulations. Um, have yielded results in which edges are preserved even in low light conditions, um, and that's that's one of the benefits of DPCM. Uh, RAW 24 is, is geared towards uh, dramatically improving uh, image quality, particularly for machine vision applications, uh, real time perception decision making applications. You know, particularly if you're looking at something like over 120 dB as a requirement for for your image quality, RAW 24 would be um, would certainly help um, meet those um, uh, objective requirements. A unified imaging driver is an incredibly important development. This, the, this camera work group has spent quite a bit of resources and time advancing this. Um, but there are about uh, 500, 600 different parameters that are now uh, standardized so that when we couple a relatively complex image sensor, or quite often product platforms um, are, are coupled to different image sensors, and they could be from the same company or, or they could come from different companies. In the past, this would quite often require um, software image driver engineers to spend maybe two, three months bringing up these image sensors before we can even capture an image um, and, and then begin the whole interop uh, activity and so on. However, with the deployment of CSI to CCS, and CCS stands for Camera Command Set, um, this, is, this is enabling uh, rapid deployment, rapid bring up of, of CSI to image sensors on product platforms, uh, uh, again, poised to reducing engineering, um, engineering software driver development costs, uh, and also accelerate uh, interoperability in, in, in product platforms. Now, this slide is for more or less a, 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 sort of an offline review. What you see here in the dark blue um, is, is, the, is, the, is the benefit or rather the impact of deploying uh, CSI 2 over D5 uh, uh, gallows field 2 to the 16 power spectral density reduction. Uh, and on the right side, again, the dark blue is with the PRVS 16 deployed on CSI 2 over C5. Um, again, this is going to enable placement of image sensors close to um, uh, relatively sensitive uh, radio receivers like GPS receivers, for instance. 
uh, LRTA, uh, latency reduction transport efficiency, it has three um, benefits. And, and this is a low-hanging fruit mainly because from a, from a complexity perspective, from an engineering implementation perspective, um, this, this should be relatively trivial, but the advantages are, are, are quite, uh, quite dramatic. Um, so, so the first thing we are tackling here is, is that historically when we think about a MIPI CSI to interface, it's a dual voltage signaling. Uh, we often use 1.2 volt signaling for control codes and uh, 800 millivolt for uh, high speed transmission uh, using differential signaling. And what LRT ALP does is that it provides a pathway for communications between a sensor and, and an application processor uh, using uh, essentially the, the differential high speed signaling. Uh, thereby eliminating the need for uh, high voltage, uh, uh, high voltage uh, requirements on, on product platforms uh, that often results in electrical overstress uh, resulting from transistor stacking and currently case that can impede battery life. Uh, the second advantage is, is that we have, um, we have we have LRT provides um, one of the most optimal pathways to transporting frames and meeting some of the stringent requirements of reducing latency for um, sonar applications. And, and the, the way we are doing this is by um, replacing packet delimiters, which historically would have uh, end of transmission sequence followed by uh, LPS, low power states, followed by start of transmission sequence with a far more optimized Phi generated and consumed signaling uh, between CSI, CSI um, packets. And, and this has incredible benefits when we are, um, um, for instance, aggregating various sensors and sending them through, um, through, through a long spine to, to a vision system. And, and uh, uh, the, the third benefit is that, is that by by facilitating a, um, a single voltage line, for the first time, uh, we are breaking some of the physics boundaries that, that have historically held um, MIPI CSI2 interfaces uh, natively facilitating longer reach. So, so for instance, from a, from a receiver perspective, um, uh, we, we typically have receivers that, that if, if, the, if the capacitive load on the line exceeds, say, 70 to 75 pass, uh, the receiver's ability to discern the difference between a 1.2 volt signaling and an 800 millivolt signaling diminishes uh, quite rapidly. And we typically have on product platforms about three puff loss for traversing an inch. So, so around 20 to 25 uh, inches, Purely from a physics perspective, we simply couldn't support a native, um, uh, natively support uh, 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 reaches beyond 20 to 25 inches with a, with a, uh, uh, with a prior legacy solutions. Um, LRTE helps to alleviate this, uh, mainly again because we, we no longer need to have receivers uh, that, are, that are required to detect dual voltage signaling um, uh, from, a, from a receiver perspective. Slide 17, and by the way, we will be publishing um, this, this deck shortly after the webinar, but slide 17 is really for offline review. Uh, we, one of the member companies uh, was in the process of developing uh, uh, multiple sensor solutions for um, uh, automotive, um, uh, particularly uh, European automotive, uh, and in this case, um, uh, using a 2.3 meg sensor at 12 bits per pixel and 60 frames a second as an example. And what this slide um, is, is that it's, it's a detailed analysis of how deploying LRTE can, can reduce you know, a combination of uh, um, wire switching rate power by about 23% uh, or uh, support 40% more image sensors using the existing uh, long reach CERDES. Um, this is again for offline analysis by, by system architects um, and certainly you know, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to the camera work group.
The smart region of interest uh, really it, it goes to the it really addresses the the, the strong um, participation by the by the handful of global image sensor companies uh, who have uh, who have invested um, billions of dollars essentially in advancing the image sensor modules and and this is one of the results um, in which historically we we often tend to associate image sensor modules with um, uh, relatively old um, uh, process nodes but thanks to the the advancements of um, some of the foundries uh, we now have capabilities of deploying uh, image sensor modules uh, um, uh, uh, using multi-stack solutions in which some of the stacks could indeed be using process nodes that are much more newer. So what this means is that is that this is going this is for the first time enabling the possibility of edge processing, um, edge inferencing uh, that that can that can complement. Um, a, a much more sophisticated uh, centralized vision engines. Um, so for now, in CSI to version 3.0 that has been released, we have we have solution for um, uh, inferencing uh, using single frame, and and this is incredibly beneficial for uh, a broad range of applications, particularly automated factory applications uh, or, or medical image scanning applications where we are looking for uh, some anomaly, uh, something, um, um, something that, is, um, that is out of place. And, and instead of having, um, uh, instead of having uh, essentially human capital that has to be deployed, and then they would eventually essentially have to monitor a conveyor belt, we now have uh, uh, self-encapsulated inferencing solutions within a camera module that could then use a MIPI interface, CSI to interface, to, to easily connect to relatively complex existing infrastructure without requiring much of an overhaul in the in the back end uh, which is which is an incredible value proposition um, for for number of uh, institutions the differential pulse code modulation um, development uh, here uh, has has a has a slide has a table rather on the bottom left hand side um, that that provides some interesting examples of how let's say if you have a, a, a legacy 30s, we could use DPCM 12, 10, 12, and, and reduce the bandwidth needs by, say, say in this case, 20 percent, and and still have um, and still meet the objective requirement for identifying edges, which is particularly useful. Uh, for instance, let's say if your if your autonomous vehicle um, uh, has a has a system that is that is that is required to identify street signs in in low light conditions, um, and again um, we we ran simulations through uh, high intensity, medium intensity, low intensity, correlated with the um, uh, low contrast, medium contrast, high contrast, and and various modular transfer functions to ensure. That the solution that we have provided uh, for, for CSI2 is indeed the best possible solution we, we could come up with as a collective. Forward looking, um, algorithm is, is certainly the king, particularly um, image sensor um, uh, inferencing algorithms. And so from this perspective, we continue to advance the camera command sets, but also going forward. We plan on working very closely with the MIPI software work group to advance um, this goal for imaging. And, and this is essentially providing the pathway for, for capabilities like um, uh, uh, built-in self-tuning, uh, self identifying defects on the image sensor, identifying the perimeters along the image sensor that, that are simply cannot be um, useful, and, and various other uh, self-calibration features uh, which will again help to rapidly bring up uh, uh, image sensors on, on, on various uh, product platforms. So we covered what's done, and, and I'm going to briefly talk about what's currently work in process mapped to CSI to uh, 4.0 development. There, there are four very important features. Uh, AOSC is targeting uh, ultra-low power solution for always-on awareness. 
um, always on monitoring. And here, the ideal conduit is going to be uh, using I3C, uh, and, we'll, and, and it's, a, it's a very important development supporting two different modes, um, smart transport mode and optimal transport mode. Functional safety, it's, um, it's, it's really understanding what's needed from ISO 26262 that was released in 2018 and, and distilling the, the safety requirements onto the CSI2 um, imaging conduit solution. Um, the third is um, uh, developing a standardized um, 30 solution for long reach applications, say traversing 10 meters in an automotive product platform, and that's, that's the A5 development. Um, and the fourth is uh, uh, imaging security that is, that is targeting three key areas, including authentication, uh, data citing, as well as obfuscation. From, from AOS perspective, the idea is, is that, you know, historically we have been talking about an image sensor depicted here as an SNS and an application processor using CSI to over C5 or, or a D5 solution. And, and the, the um, uh, AOS solution for the first time is going to enable a development of um, vision DSPs. I and mean, these could be a companion solution or, or the DSP could be, a, uh, um, a, could be in a separate power island in, a, in an application processor, or it could be an integrated solution within a sensor module. But the point is the, the ability for VDSP to continuously monitor um, um, uh, some anomaly, some, some phenomenon, and, and, and act as a sentinel to wake up the rest of the system has a broad range of um, applications. And um, so some of the interesting numbers that we are targeting is, you know, can we develop a solution uh, less than two milliwatts, and this is the whole VDSP SNS solution uh, using, say, three frames a second, eight to 10 bits per pixel, QVGA, perhaps a prop frame, um, uh, or, or a normalized full frame. And so these are some of the um, uh, applications that, that we are currently looking into uh, as, as, a, as an AOSC, um, an AOSC, as part of AOSC development. End-to-end uh, -end security, um, it, it, we are working uh, in collaboration uh, or in, uh, with an external liaison with uh, Distributed Management Task Force, and uh, there's an SPDM specification that is developed in conjunction with the CSI to specification uh, uh, to, to ensure that the solution we are developing is as holistic and, and they are complementary. And so from a system integration perspective, this, this has a number of benefits, mainly because as PDM um, is not only providing uh, what is needed for MIPI CSI2 imaging, uh, but it also uh, is able to provide a, a system-wide uh, unified solution for other, other interfaces and, and product platforms as well. Slide 25 has a number of um, next level details for, uh, for security experts to perhaps uh, uh, take a look offline. And if you have any feedbacks or comments, feel free to reach out to the camera work group. Functional safety breaks down into end-to-end -end CRC protection along with uh, uh, frame structure enhancements and fault injection mode. And, and so one of the benefits of, of, of functional safety um, is that um, once we deploy this, we believe we will have all the necessary ingredients for, for realizing uh, or deploying imaging conduit solutions for realizing fully autonomous solutions. So bringing everything together, if we kind of take a look at the evolution of CSI, you know, from CSI to version 1.x to 2.x and 3 and 4, um, this is all kind of merging or rather um, uh, building up to providing a highly sophisticated and comprehensive infrastructure for, for essentially realizing uh, uh, and a detailed surrounding awareness along with uh, support for emotional awareness with, uh, with, with privacy and inferencing capabilities. This, is, um, this slide is, a, um, is an overview of, of what, is, what the work group is presently working on as a part of CSI2 version 4.0. And again, I'll leave this for offline, uh, offline review. Um, and I'm going to jump over to um, uh, some of the forward-looking trends. So certainly for various imaging and, and vision applications, 
uh, 3D perception, um, developing comprehensive solutions for supervised uh, uh, training models, deep learning object classifications, uh, uh, requires not only local processing capabilities, but there is, there is quite often a massive server farm that is often referred to as a cloud backend that requires network connection. And, and with the advancement of 5G and the millimeter waves and, and perhaps also other existing um, uh, connected solutions, uh, we are very much interested in perhaps exploring a pathway to standardizing uh, an end-to-end -end conduit that, that goes beyond just the local processing. Again, purely explorative, explorative state right now, and we are kind of in the process of um, uh, figuring out what, what may be uh, beneficial to, uh, to, to standardize. Uh, from, a, from the FISE and IOS perspective, with, with CSI to version 3.0, we have support for CFI and DFI. With CSI to version 4.0, uh, we are now going to be adding um, native support over I3C, the AOS development for ultra low power, always on applications. And there's, of course, AFI uh, that is in development for, for, for long-reach uh, long applications. And as mentioned previously, um, the work group is looking at, at, at beyond CSI to 4.0 uh, exploration evaluation for cloud connectivity applications uh, as well. So the key difference between CSI2 over DeFi and CSI2 over CFI is that is that DeFi uses periodic differential forwarded clock, and on the rising edge and falling edge of the of the clock, we have data that is sampled using differential data lanes. Um, CFI uses three wires, and and with three wires we have six states. Like going back to our uh, college physics or high school physics, we have you know, A to B, B to C, A to C, and the polar opposites. And as a policy, in order to make clock recovery um, relatively simple, as a policy for CSI to over CFI, we, we sacrifice one of the states. So we, we are always guaranteeing a, a unique state for every clock, and that basically results in a theoretical coding gain of log, um, uh, of log two to the five, so that's about 2.3 2. Uh, effective pixel bandwidth uh, gain over the switching rate. And so how this is implemented uh, in, in real world applications uh, is, that, um, is that we are transferring um, 16 bits for over seven symbols using, using CSI2 or C5 solution. And as a result, uh, uh, today um, we have CSI2 3.0 that has been adopted, um, supporting um, the latest D5 version 2.5 and the latest D5 version. Um, uh, sorry, there's a there is a typo here. Um, there is a latest C5 version 2.0 uh, and D5 version uh, 2.5, and and um, we have nine wires for CSI to over C5 delivering 41 gigabits per second. Uh, using the MIPI standard channel, and we have 10 wires uh, uh, CSI over D5 delivering 18 gigabits per second. Um, now, it doesn't have to be 9 or 10 wires. Uh, the 9 wires is a 3-lane solution, the 10 wire is a 4-lane solution, but it's all uh, completely customizable. We could use 1 lane, 2 lane, or perhaps even 8 lanes if, if that's what's needed. Um, this is the slide for what's available at CSI to 3.0, um, a very important feature, unified serial link, where we build unified serial link on the latency reduction transport efficiency. And what you notice here is, you know, the stuff on the gray um, is, the, is, a, is, a, is a pre USL systems where you have um, a unidirectional high-speed file for transporting pixels from an image sensor along with command data. And then we often have uh, bidirectional I2C, I3C spy interfaces for bidirectional register access between a sensor and an application processor. And then we have GPIOs for controlling flash and other complementary sensors in the sensor module, which is now all encapsulated uh, using bidirectional C5 and D5 with fast bus turnaround uh, with the release of CSI to version 3.0. And so as you can imagine, for product platforms, 
um, that, that, are, that have limited uh, hinge openings, uh, and with the newer product platforms, uh, as they're becoming thinner and narrower, uh, the hinge openings are perhaps around two and a half to three millimeter. Reducing the number of wires is incredibly important. Um, and, and also on product platforms where the weight of the wire uh, um, has, has uh, diminishing returns and battery life, let's say drone for instance, again this will help to, um, uh, help to uh, alleviate some of, the, um, some of the pain points. And last but not least, if you look at this from a system perspective and, and security and attack vectors, Having a less number of wires and essentially encapsulating both pixel transport and um, data and command and firmware upload uh, just to the bi-directional phi wire, uh, phi interface using CSI2 uh, has incredible benefits because everything we are developing for CSI2 frame, such as functional safety, such as, uh, such as security, can, can now be overlaid onto the USL uh, and we don't, we don't necessarily have to now deploy a separate functional safety or, or security solution for GPIOs or for I2C, I3C uh, camera control sets. So this slide here, um, it, it sort of depicts in a matrix a hypothetical product platform and the importance of something MIPI Camera Work Group has done uh, with regards to conformance test suite, um, we, we went to one of the leading industry experts, UNH IOL, and we brought in their expertise to develop a highly comprehensive end-to-end -end conformance test suite that has, that has also been released with the latest CSI2, uh, CSI2 from Camera Work Group. And, and the idea is that, is that, as you can see here, um, there are multiple different flavors of CSI2 conduits that may be required on a, on a relatively complex product platform. And then for each one of these conduits, we, we may want to enable select um, imaging features and capabilities. And, and with, the, with, the, um, uh, with the resources we are putting into conformance test suite, our hope is to dramatically reduce the interop issues we often see on product platforms when we bring together highly sophisticated image sensor modules in conjunction with aggregators and, and uh, uh, application processors which may have a combination of uh, uh, neural engines and, and uh, ISPs and IPUs um, connected through MIPI interfaces. There has been an incredibly uh, detailed presentation on automotive and AFI, and there is a link that we are providing uh, with the, um, in, in the slide deck. And also in 2019, there was a presentation on uh, some of the features, the bit, bit more of a technical detail overview uh, that, that was presented in, in September 2019. And so let me bring us to um, the, the summary. Um, Clearly the future is uh, deeper interactions with the machines and, and, and we would very much like to deploy comprehensive imaging solutions so that we can enable the, the gift of sight to, to artificial intelligence. That, that's essentially what we are doing. And, and some of the most complex problems, uh, such as real-time perception and decision-making at scale, it simply cannot be solved by a single company. And this is where MIPI is proving to be such a fertile uh, platform to help advance standardized solutions, um, architectural solutions, providing a comprehensive end-to-end -end imaging conduit solutions for, for not only mobile cameras, but certainly for broad range of imaging vision applications on, on, on beyond mobile uh, product platforms. But the fact is we have CSI2 cameras in, in number of the automotive, um, autonomous automotive vehicles as well as drones uh, in deployment as it is today. And then we continue to advance um, uh, the, the features and capabilities. Uh, the infrastructure uh, has to facilitate machine awareness, uh, not only on multiple product platforms, but also support, supporting um, some of the, um, uh, rather the advancements on image sensors beyond just capturing visible spectrum. And that is something we will continue to uh, pursue. So one example here is, you know, supporting thermal sensors. 
Um, and, and this has incredible benefits because for the first time, we now can deploy applications that is not reliant on active radiation, and we can just capture passive radiation. The third bullet really, um, you know, goes down to one, one of the more um, uh, interesting benefits that comes out of um, uh, participation in MIPI, and that is uh, helping to democratize the benefits of um, uh, the benefits of um, uh, AI and vision um, through, through standardization. We often consider the CSI to frames as digital goals, you know, whether it be surveillance applications or, or, or deep learning. And, and um, one, of the, one of the benefits certainly here is uh, we, all get to ben we all get to benefit from the solutions that, that we develop as a collective. So together, we are indeed going further. And, and aside from the MIPI camera work group, we, MIPI also provides the, um, the foundation to work with other uh, technical work groups, uh, such as the FI work group advancing A5C5D5, C5, D5, the sensor work group advancing I3C, uh, software work group for co-developing this core for imaging, as well as external liaisons. Um, so with that, um, thank you, everyone. I'm going, to, I'm going to go on mute and perhaps take uh, questions online. Thank you, Haran. Uh, I encourage questions to come through in the chat or Q&A window. We do have a few moments, so please go ahead and pose your question if you have one. Meanwhile, I do see a question that has come in. Does the CSI V3.0 image conduit USL offer full BW for camera control access and pixel transport? While the wire reduction benefits are impressive, there, are there any performance penalties in supporting USL? Okay, right. That, that, that's, that's a, yeah, that's a very, uh, very um, uh, important uh, question, Dervla. So, so unified serial link provides a pathway to alleviate the need for additional wires like, like I2C, I3C, GPIOs. And, and we do this by, um, um, by, by deploying C5 and D5 that are, for the first time, capable of supporting fast bus turnaround. So when a system comes up, um, the, the image sensor uh, itself is, is, is capable of um, um, is essentially communicating its capabilities. And then we have um, a mechanism, a replay mechanism that is built into the solution to, to help facilitate um, firmware updates, firmware configurations um, from an application processor to the image sensor using the bus turnaround um, feature provided by C5 and, and D5. And, and once that is done, then, then everything within the image sensor module, so that, that includes the, the, the photon collector sensor um, as well as companion sensors, you know, it could be a gyro, accelerometer, um, uh, it could be a flash. Uh, all of them are would essentially appear as register map devices for the application processor to to configure um, uh, uh, using using by uh, by the bus, tur bus turnaround. The key takeaway is that the perform there are no performance penalties, meaning that meaning that for imaging applications, the, the, the full bandwidth capability of the PHI is preserved in the forward direction. And the forward direction meaning the, the, the direction going from image sensor to the, to the application processor. And it typically, it is during the vertical blanking and possibly even during horizontal blanking, we are able to perform the fast bus turnaround and, and perform the periodic um, periodic updates to, to the image sensor on, a, on an as-needed basis. Um, and so if we take a look at the systems today, for instance, the camera control interface, for broad range of product platforms that's, that's in existence today, the, the, the bandwidth that's supported here is around 400 kilohertz. 
Um, and, and because these are much more sophisticated files, the, even the, um, uh, the reverse bandwidth supported is going to be um, orders of magnitude higher than just 400 kilobits per second. And that's how we are able to facilitate um, all of the imaging applications using USL um, and at the same time alleviate the need for additional, additional wires. Thanks, Harry. I know it's two minutes past the hour. I do have one more question, if you have a moment to answer that. Sure. What are the differences between CSI 2 v4.0 AOSC OTM and STM operations? Right. So, so the CSI 2 4.0 always on Sentinel controller. It has it has the optimal transport mode and the smart transport mode. The smart transport mode is essentially a marriage of what we have already developed in CSI to version 3.0, which is smart region of interest, where you have built-in inferencing capability, and we are bringing that we are bringing that into into the always-on Sentinel conduit, um, where the sensor is blessed with essentially built-in inferencing, and and the implication is that. Um, the image sensor um, wouldn't, or rather the VDSP doesn't need to wake up the image sensor as often. Um, there is some um, preemptive sentinel functionality that is built into the sensor module, and, and it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't need to utilize or, or burn power as much as the, the optimal transport mode. And the optimal transport mode is where this is a basic sensor, and this sensor is continuously, or rather on a periodic basis, sending a cropped or a full frame to, to the VDSP, which is enhancing uh, the inferencing algorithm that is, that is quite often co-authored by, by, by people as well as machines um, to, to, on a continuous basis, detect for some kind of an anomaly. Um, so in summary, STM is really, it's really bringing the smart region of interest and, and, and sort of merging that with the, uh, with the AOS, and, and it's bestowing the sensor module with inferencing capability for always on awareness. Uh, OTM, on the other hand, is that it's is, is mapped to using baseline image sensor modules, and we have a separate VDSP, uh, vision DSP, uh, which, which quite often in the industry can has a much shorter um, uh, development time, uh, and, and this can be rapidly deployed for bespoke uh, inferencing applications, and, and we are able to then utilize existing sensor modules to, uh, to facilitate uh, real-time inferencing uh, and, and sentinel detection. Thanks, Aaron. I do have one more question, although I wanted to check on time and see if you are open to answering that. Uh, yes, I am I'm available to tell uh, 10 a.m. Uh, Darla. Okay. How is the Nephi Alliance working towards gaining assuring user privacy from cameras? Is there any work to let system designers assure sensors are not active while still connected using CSI2 over DeFi or CFI? Can, can you repeat the question, Darla? I, I missed the last part. Yes. So how is Wi-Fi Alliance working towards gaining assuring user privacy from cameras? Is there any work to let system designers assure sensors are not active while still connected using CSI2 over D5 or C5? Oh, that is, that is a very, very important question. So privacy is incredibly important, especially when we are talking about always on awareness. And, and as, we, as we see today in a number of product platforms, we sometimes tend to have those plastic sliders um, or perhaps even um, customers who would basically place a sticker on the cameras. So we are very much aware that privacy um, is, is incredibly important. So one of the features that we are working on for CSI to 4.0, and that is still under discussion, is it's sort of like a kill switch. Uh, meaning that, that um, there, there's perhaps a standardized provision that we can deploy 
on MIPI CSI to camera sensors to say, um, uh, you know, please flush any frames um, that may be in the buffers and, and um, you know, make certain the photon collectors are disabled. Um, in, in addition to that, uh, from a from a security perspective, there are various attack vectors that that we are considering, and, and this is in slide number 25 for offline review. You know that goes into things like you know device data confidentiality, host authentication, um, uh, device manufacturing. Um, this is all geared towards providing comprehensive security. On a, on a per use case application basis, and it's really a slider. You know, we could make this as, as, as sophisticated, you know, with high complexities uh, in which we are basically encrypting every single long packet of a CSI to frame, uh, or on the other side, we could say we just require device authentication and, and that's it. As long as we know it's a trusted center module, then, then we are good to go. Um, so so it's, a, it's an implementation level um, decision that will have to be made by the product system architect. But from a CSI development perspective, we are providing the features and capabilities uh, to help facilitate um, the, the privacy, especially as we're talking about always on, always on imaging, always on uh, awareness. That's a good question. Thanks, Aaron. I don't see any more questions. I would say we're eight minutes past the hour and would thank everyone for their joining today. And thanks, Aaron and Peter. As we mentioned, the slides will be available. They will be in the Knowledge Library in the webinar section by the end of the day today. And a recording will also be available. So with that, I thank everyone and wish you a good day. Thank you. Bye, everyone.